Tell me how you encountered Ted Bundy. It was October of 1974. I was a, a pharmacy student at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. I was at a city park waiting for a bus to take me back up to campus. The bus was late. I was getting frustrated. And then this tan Volkswagen drove by very slowly. Cute driver kind of looked at me as he went past and then he stopped and backed up and leaned over and rolled down the passenger window and asked me where I was going. I told him I was going up to the U and he said, me too, hop in. So I opened the door and got in. The first thing that I noticed was the inside passenger door handle was missing and he leaned over and pulled the door shut. But I wasn't alarmed. I figured college kid, college car, things fall off. How does he look to you at the time? He looked like a college student. He was dressed nice, had a green pullover, sweater on, nice slacks. And you say, okay, because he looks like the fabric of the university community. He didn't look like an outsider. He didn't look like we would think about a predator. Right. So you drive off, and what was his demeanor? Lighthearted. We just had the normal conversation that strangers would have. I told him, my name's Rhonda, and I'm a pharmacy student. What are you studying? He told me his name was Ted, and he was a law student. In a, just a couple of blocks, he turned a way that wasn't the normal route to the university. And I asked him about that, and he was very polite and asked my permission if it would be all right if he took a little detour. He told me he had to run an errand up by the zoo, and I told him that would be fine. I didn't care. I thought I would still be home faster than if I had waited for the bus. And then we went right on past the zoo, and I said, hey, I thought we were taking me to the zoo. And he said, no. I said, near the zoo. That road goes over the hill and drops down into Parley's Canyon, which is the main highway back into the city. Nothing's gone off in your head yet? Nothing's gone off. We're just having fun. We get to the bottom of that canyon, we should have turned right to go towards campus. And instead he turned left and started driving up another canyon. And as he's driving, he's kind of looking at parking places and side roads. The conversation started to go weird then because he stopped talking to me. And I'm still trying to make idle conversation. And, and I'm thinking that he's probably looking for a place to pull off in the park and wants to make out. And, I don't know him and I'm not really a makeout person, but he's still a cute law student and I don't want to offend him and I don't want to embarrass myself. So I'm thinking of how do I get out of this situation? And then he pulled into a parking place and, and parked the car and turned it off. So at this point you think, I'm going to have to fend off a romantic advance. Yes. And then he turned in the car seat so he's kind of facing me and he leaned in really close. I thought he was going to kiss me. Instead, he said very quietly, do you know what? I'm going to kill you. And he put his hands on my throat and started squeezing. My first thought was, it has to be some kind of a joke. This guy's got a weirdest sense of humor. But that was just maybe a fraction of a second because I realized he was squeezing too tightly. He was serious and I was in trouble. And there's no door handle. What did you do? We had a little small battle in the car, but I went unconscious. So he choked you to the point of unconsciousness? Yes. Did you put up a fight? I did as much of a fight as you can put up when you're running out of air. Did you think at that point? I'm going to die. You think I'm dying in this Volkswagen bug right here? I thought I was going to die right there in the car, but he had other, other plans. 